Hello, my name is Adrian O'Sullivan. I am a PhD student in the Electrical and Electronic Engineering Building in UCC. I am under MRI and getting funded by the SFI, where my PhD is based on the control engineering of a wave energy devices, and where this video is based on the Henkel Singular Value Decomposition, where I mentioned it beforehand in my other video, which is based on my first paper, which is called the wave to wire power maximization of a wave energy converter. So in this video I will be discussing the Henkler singular value decomposition where the main objective is to reduce the size of the state space system. Where the steps are one uh, to f obtain the controllability and observability grimmines, which will I show later on. Number two, to insert those grimmines into the Lyapunov equations. Number three, to, to solve and find the transformed state space system which is A hat, B hat, C hat, and D hat. And where these matrices are in terms of the previous state space system, the original A, B, C, and D, and the, the transformation matrix uh, T, which is what we're trying to find in the end of the day. And at four, uh, we find the eigenvalues, which is sigma squared, I'll, that, it doesn't make any sense now until I show you. Five, uh, to find the eigenvectors, uh, u and u transpose. Six, to solve for the transformation matrix, T, where with this transformation matrix, we can then uh, insert them into the equations that you solved for in uh, part three above and then you'll be able to find your new uh, balanced uh, system. Happy days. So the first part is just stating a system, which is just the standard state space system that you can do in the continuous domain, as here, where I've assumed that D is equal to zero. So there's no uh, feed-forward disturbances. Uh, the first part is uh, stating the two Lyapunov equations, which are the main uh, foundations for the Hankel singular value decomposition uh, method, where A, B, and C are just the standard uh, matrices within the continuous state space system. And P is the controllability Grimmian in the uh, continuous domain, as stated here, where T is transpose. And we have Q, which is equal to the observability Grimmian. So from here we know that uh, P and Q are unbalanced. So this is the whole point, the HSVD, the Hankel singular value decomposition. We're trying to get P and Q into a balanced state. So for this to be balanced, it has to be a diagonal matrix and they have to be equal to each other as shown here. So this is ideally what we're trying to solve in the future. So what we have to do is transform the system into this balanced system. So by multiplying uh, the state matrix a X of T by the transform matrix T, we get a new system. So then we get Z dot and in terms of X. So we get this new system here, uh, which is coming next. Here we go. So by multiplying uh, 
T on the left side, uh, it cancels out to be an identity matrix. And the system, the new system is now in terms of uh, Z dot. Where Z dot is in terms of uh, TA, T inverse and TB. So we can see that the first part is the new A matrix, A of hat and B of hat. So we can rewrite this in the new balance system. Whoops. And we can now represent the the output of the system in terms of a z of dot instead of x of dot as seen here. Where does the new uh, output matrix C of or C hat? So we've got the new system A of hat, B of hat, and C of hat in terms of the transformation matrix and its uh, original uh, state space matrices. So from here, we can choose the first Lyapunov equation, and we can multiply on the left side by uh, the transform T. Just make it a bit quicker here now. And then we can take that equation, take, uh, take the, yeah. And we can multiply on the right side by T transpose. So by reorientating this equation, I'm doing nothing, I'm just adding T inverses and T's so that they multiply out to be um, identity matrices. But you can see here that when I do this, just running out of space here, uh, I'm going to have to go on to the next page. But I'm going to rewrite the same thing. So it's just the same equation here. TB and B. Oh, I will write it in the same one, but with transpose on the outside. So TB transpose. So now we can see that the first part here is A hat. And there's another A hat here, or it's A transpose, if I take the whole lot. And then this is uh, B hat. So we can rewrite the entire thing as A hat TPT transpose plus TPT transpose by A hat transpose plus B hat, write the hat, and B hat transpose. So that's the first part where we can see that the TPT transpose is the new balanced uh, controllability group mine P hat. Taking the second part then, it's just the second uh, Lyapunov equation except with observability group mines instead of the controllability group mines. And we just do a very similar um, method except we multiply on the left side by uh, T transpose inverse as I'm doing here. And then I'll take this equation. Do, 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 do. I'll take this equation and then I'll multiply on the right side by T inverse. So just doing the exact same method as I was doing before with the first uh, equation, I can see that it splits up into T uh, transpose uh, inverse into this matrix A here or into this equation here. Running out of space.
And then I'll re -re uh, rewrite this equation right here. Running out of space again. And then you can see that the first part is the a hat again. And there's another a hat over here. This is a c hat. So then I can rewrite the entire equation with the new q of hat. So I can rewrite the new balance system as a hat, q hat, plus q hat, a hat, missed a transpose here, sorry, plus c hat a transpose by a or c hat is equal to zero. So that's right. Whoop. So now we can uh, find the new controllability grammine, which is the balance one and the observability gramine, which is the balanced one, as just these two equations here. So we know that for a balanced system, we want p hat and q hat to be equal to each other. So we know that p hat by q hat is sigma squared. So what we'll do is we'll say that uh, since Q is a square matrix and that it's uh, symmetrical, we can say that we can split it up into two triangular matrices, R, so R uh, transpose by R, and we can fill that into the P hat by Q hat equation above. Rewriting this equation again, we will find that tpq t inverse is equal to sigma squared and filling this in we will get this and then uh, introducing um, or inverses uh, we can then put into this or orientation So this is getting very sim or so okay. So this uh, equation here or this matrix A here is a diagonal matrix where R T inverse is orthogonal, and we know this from the standard singular value decomposition method. So we are we're assuming we're naming the orthogonal matrix A as U here R T inverse. And we bring this across, and we can say that uh, our inverse, or u inverse, is a u transpose, since the transpose of a matrix of our orthogonal matrix is an inverse. So we can say now that uh, the sigma squared matrix A here is eigenvalues, and the u and u transpose are eigenvector matrices, just from the normal singular value decomposition formula, which is you can find it online. It's you can find some good lectures in MIT or anything like that. It's fairly good. So then, just by using the standard um, eigenvalues um, formulation, we can find what the eigenvalues actually are. By well, find or find the determinant of the equation, and then we can find all the different eigenvalues: beta one, beta two, all the way down to beta n. But we know that the eigenvalues are not equal to sigma, they're equal to sigma squared. So we know that now that sigma is equal to the square root of the eigenvalues. So now when we bring the eigenvalues back over, when we uh, find them out using the equations, 
we can then solve for the eigenvectors, which is u here, which is just a matrix A of n by n uh, dimensions. And this is going to be a unit uh, eigenvector. So then we can find the eigenvalues as we did before. As the sigma squares, so you just square those or get the square root of those values to get the sigma 1, 2, and 3s. And this is equal to uh, the controllability and observability gramines when they're balanced. So when you plot these eigenvalues, you'll get the power of the states and the state values on the x-axis. You can do this using MATLAB or you can just do this by using paper. And you'll get graphs like this where you'll get dominant states here which will get the majority of the power and then you'll get insignificant states right down here in the red arrows. So the first few states here uh, will represent about 95% of the entire system so you can really narrow the entire system down. So then we can write an equation which we had beforehand u sigma squared by u uh, transpose and then we can introduce in square root sigma values and inverse square roots uh, sigma values into it. Mathematically it makes no difference because it just equals to sigma squared in the middle anyway but we'll just sh write down and I'll show you in two seconds here now what it's all about. And then we'll write down a previous equation which we had beforehand. And then from this you can say that u uh, square root of sigma is equal to r t inverse. And this is where the system uh, reduction really comes in. So if you see uh, where the majority of the power is in that graph, you can then uh, summarize that the insignificant states have zero power. So you can set those eigenvalues as zero, and then you can fill into this equation down here, and you can find the transfer new transformation system that gives you the new reduced order of the system. So that's the new reduced balance system. Uh, so that's that. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you, I hope you learned something from it. You don't have to do the entire thing. There's great functions on MATLAB for it, and just uh, make a few comments below. And thanks for watching.